In this screencast, we're going to talk about the first order plus dead time, or FOP DT model. So the first order plus dead time model is used frequently in industry, and it is a combination of a first order process plus dead time. So the equation for it would look like tau p times dy dt plus y of t equals your process gain kp times u. And here's where the difference comes in. It's u of t minus your process delay time theta. So therefore, the transfer function of this equation would be for your process being the ratio of y of s to u of s equal to your process gain times the Laplace transform of your delay time divided by the same denominator you would get in just a regular first order model. Now the good thing about the first order plus dead time model is that it often approximates higher order processes. That would be second order and above processes very well, as shown by this graph. So you get some deviation here and a little teeny bit here between this first order dead time model and plus dead time model and a fifth order process, which is shown in the light curve. As you can see in the first order plus dead time model, the reason why you get deviation here up front is that early on, during the period where you're having you're actually having the dead time, nothing is actually happening to that model. Whereas in the fifth order process, you actually do have some change, although it is sluggish in the beginning. And this is why the first order plus dead time model actually fits higher order processes rather well. So even if a real world process is not strictly first order plus dead time, you can develop such a model to approximate the process by using a step change in input. So let's say that you're a process engineer on the floor and you make a step change in input to your process and then you can measure what um, or how that process changes and then settles into its new steady state. In that case you can use this first order plus dead time model to approximate your process even if it is a higher order process. So to do that, you make the step change, you plot how that step change affects your process variable y, and then you measure three things about, or two things about this graph. First you measure how long it takes for the graph to reach two-thirds of its maximal height, and the second would be how long it takes to make reach one-third of its maximal height. From these two characteristics, you can calculate both the uh, time constant for your first order plus dead time model, tau p, and also your delay time, theta p. So your tau p in this case is 0 0.7 times t two-thirds minus t one-third. And your delay time in your process is one th t one-third minus 0 0.4 times tau p that you just calculated. So you can see that even if this process, which clearly is not first order plus dead time, you can make an approximation of it using these metrics. Finally, you need to know what your process gain is. And that's just as just simple, like how far does your new steady state deviate from your previous steady state, divided by how much your step change in input was.